dear venerable sisters the my friends this is the final session in our retreat uh, you can start if you have any questions related to meditation and once that finished we'll hand over the mic to the organization uh, venerable bante uh, this seem this might seem like a silly question but i just want to a uh, clarification i have heard that it is good to um, acknowledge or thank you your mind after a good session on meditation um so my question is mm. if as a sense of as a source of encouragement uh, because you know this is a moment by moment practice which is difficult to maintain at the, at least at the beginning so it, by doing that first is that a good thing to do and then if i if i do that will i be labeling and um will i be having expectations in the next you know for the next session to go correctly better and also if if i modify that a little bit and say uh, thank you for you know helping me to train you or something like that but to say i know that next round will be you know totally unpredictable thank you so that i i don't know the basic concept of thanking it mind is thank into the mind so this is kind of a it's a kind of a uncontrolled situation so therefore it is just kind of a condition so there's no hard and fast rule that you have to do it you can do and see you can try to do trial and and see kind of an appreciation and uh, but uh, Uh, in singala we call horagyamai penahano horagyamma tamange puta horakan kiyowa kiyala kiyanne ani thi wage me mind ekata thank karagathoth mind eka visimma eka me it's not a social issue it is kind of a kind of a thing so there is no such a standard say there is no standard uh, ritual there is no standard uh, instruction so advice for that you can try and see just a comment so when we bante you mentioned that find a reason to be glad uh, can you elaborate on that to so see only the love spots in the life see the better part of the life so not only the uh, the mind even in the social interaction wherever may be uh see the better part subha paramaham bikave metta cheto vimutti vadami see only the subha the, the love spots so then uh, you are my stream of conscious basically associate the positive thinking will that prevent seeing the the reality like mm, the at the beginning it may but that prevention is leaving more space more chances for you to go ahead rather than worrying and regretting about the mistakes pante in meditation when you start to lose a sense of yourself in a retreat um would you can how do you continue to to do this in daily life or can you do it or is it only during meditation that you can do it so if you can cite an example uh, as to say what is the difficulty in the day to day life uh, after that kind of a experience then we can deal very difficult to give a generalized answer if you can give a cite an example please uh, i can't think of an example but i just thought maybe after in a retreat situation how does one continue to keep doing uh, keep this positive energy going uh, uh, in a positive way in in order to uh, you can't do you can't do it definitely uh, it will normalize it will be reduced for example it says that when the, when the astronauts are living in the space without gravity one month time when they live one month live in the no gravity situation 100th of your skeleton will be weaker because skeleton is not taking the weight 
So imagine a, a time period you are outside, when you come to the gravitational force, you, when you're going to start, stand up, you will collapse. The skeleton is completely weakened. It's little by, so when they come back, they have to go undergo certain amount of a vibration system to reinforce the weakened part of the calcium deposits. So likewise, uh, from one to the other, you can't have the complete smooth run. There may be ups and downs. So common sense is the answer. Would it be necessary to continue doing retreats or not really? So if possible, the best. That's why I became a monk. <laughs> so open ticket. <laughs> only thing is you have to skip the dinner. That's the only blockage I have. <laughs> Nothing else. So, so I'm so happy to have the dinner and rest. So instead, just skip it. Thank you, Bhante. All the others, you are better than me. He's asking the mic. Oh, Bhante, I'm so disappointed. I, I thought that this would be the, you know, the last sleep before this last retreat before enlightenment, and you, you, you say we have to come back again and again. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> So, Bhante, um, time and time again during this retreat, you've used the words, um, be prepared, like the Boy Scout uh, or the Girl Guides. Please repeat the term. Uh, be prepared. Be prepared. Be prepared. Yeah, be prepared. Um, and so I have a question about the use of aritana, um, resolution making, well, you know what it is, uh, and um, Ajahn Brahm, in his teachings, suggests the use of aditanas a lot. And I do recall a talk, a sutta talk he gave about the, I think it might have been the Upakalesa Sutta, uh, where the Buddha gave nine aditanas that a person should use or could use if they wish to uh, at the beginning of meditations to set the stage later on in meditation when you're going into things like a jhana so you don't get out of the absorption states and back into thinking. I'm wondering if you could make some comments on the wise use of aditanas both in the moments of meditation and particular in this course you've spoken a lot in making that transition from mindfulness to unmindfulness, from personality view driving the meditation to formlessness and personality disintegration and explosion of energy, all that sort of stuff. you made a much of this in this meditation uh, retreat. Could you make some comments, please, in practical ways? I can give you two examples, Mm -hmm. specifically from uh, Pandita Sayado. I I will start yet another from Venuva Jnana Rama. When he is teaching about the jhanic experience, he says the first time when you are going from the uh, (coughs) nivaranas to jhanic factors, it must be without an adhisthana. First experience must be through the maturity. When, once you go there, you may see something happen, no more nivaranas, but instead you have vitakka vichara bhiti sukhe kagata if you are well versed in theory. And then if you find that is a kind of a thing, good, least friction and kind of thing, next time also you can try and then onward, uh, you can use it but by aditana, but the first thing must be a natural input, natural maturity. Even the first time itself, if you are going to go to the by Aditana, whether you do not know, you are conditioning the mind or really maturity of the mind. So therefore, Aditana has its own weakness. It's the first thing. And for that, Upanita Sado gave an example. We'll say we have a mango fruit full of a tree of with a lot of mango tree, mangoes. And uh, so they ripen. Uh, in a heterogeneic, heterogeneic way. So if you wish to give the whole lot to the supermarket or to the uh, gross or wholesale, uh, what we do is we fumigate it and then get everything get ripened in the same time. So what the 
good farmers they do is they let one or two fruits to f- get ripen in the tree and fall down then you guess other fruits are ready now so therefore one or two has to ripen by itself and that indicates balance is ready for harvest and go for fumigation even if you can't wait till one or two fruits to fall down in the natural maturity you may be harvesting immature then the ripening is more towards the sour taste than the sweet taste so first one or two thing has to fruits has to get the mature in the uh, normal way then you can guess balance is ready the third example is who pandita said he says if you wish to cut off a tall tree uh, in midst of the houses or properties and that will fall down and break the property so therefore before start cutting you put a rope at the tall further end of the tree and tie it to a safer side and then start cutting and once the 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 cut come up to a certain extent you pull by the rope so that you can control it and take into the safe side and even then if you not enough cut and if you going to get everything by rope and half if the rope is to break it will go to the other side yeah so therefore you have to in single we call gaha under no that means when the cut is there you hear the kirikiri sound till that you have to cut and then take it by the rope the rope is the aditta so you have to understand where to apply the aditta so it is come by your own experience by aditta you can say that i am the first jana second jana third jana no way to verify because even the first time you do it by aditta by book reading or book knowledge then it is suspicious then but the day you understand day you realize this is not the real jana there is such a uh, disappointment and sometimes by the time you claim as a teacher you keep on teaching others also but still later you understand that is not the real one then committing suicide so therefore first time you have to let the, the let the, the normal maturity to happen and then onward you can make use of the tana in order to monitor it in a fair way so uh, in the jnana rama when he is writing on the seven stages of purification and vipassana jnana he says let it go there if you if you think there's a peak thing happen and no more nirvanas you can be here in for longer time and first time he says let it go for the whole cycle and read or meet the meet the teacher and next time again you may let it go in the natural way then known word to to cut the long story short you can go by aditana first jana and then take time for the second jana like so aditana you have to be strategic and that is uh, preparedness wise a whole scouting <laughs> the first and foremost thing is be prepared so that is what you call the diligence apamada that's what you call vigilance and alertness so that's what you do by vitamins you take vitamins to get your vital power but the mindfulness is the best vitamin so uh, you know when you're going into the first jhana the buddha talked about those nine things but the themes of of the summary of those nine are two fear and excitement if you recognize that you've got problems with fear and excitement as you go deeper and deeper are you saying to me now just hang in don't mess with aditanas and feel your way through the fear and excitement into the a deeper letting go rather than use aditanas to address those problem roadblocks to the first jhana you can use both at a time you have to suppress the fear and the excitement and have the peace of mind but you know it is not a real answer you just suppress it by at this time you can do it but you wish to see the total eradication you have to go deal with face to face with the fear and excitement okay both the ways that the samatha way and vipassana way bante the second part of my question was a use of aditanas in not on the meditation mat 
in 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 the life to uh, use aditanas for um, increasing mindfulness for better interpersonal communications um, do you have any ideas about the practical use of aditanas in day to day life that when i start in 77 78 i complain when about dhammika i have no time for mindfulness i have no time for sitting i have no time for walking meditation and but still i feel like uh, doing experiment with mindfulness it is mm, take a routine work like the brushing your teeth and now make a determination in future whenever i am going to uh, do brush my brush my teeth i will make a determination to be mindful so you start and half way you come to know, ah, today i started without mindfulness half way you came to know ah this is a kind of a thing i made a determination to do at the time they know not you can make use it that the routine action to be mindful and later you can understand due to this adhisthana even before while you are preparing for the brushing the adhisthana works now you are going to go so your sms slowly mindfully silently business so you have a drops in your life the equal ink drop system uh, one drop in the brushing teeth second second drop is while eating third drop is bathing or likewise you put some drops and more and more drops happen ultimately whole paper like uh, blotting paper become complete smeared with ink like so it is called ink drop system so have one drop in day to day life but uh, maybe routinely you are doing alone you are doing necessarily you are doing and that kind of adhisthana you can have and you it is a teaching technique also you can ask others also if you have no time never mind don't allocate time for mindfulness as such but uh, do one some tasks normal routine task uh, with determination i will make use this so you go a solitude place and start your thing uh, mindfulness is added value due to your aditta you could use that um i think usefully for people who don't have a lot of time to come to meditation retreats uh as a preparation in the week before you come to actually instead of starting at a certain level to drop down to a deeper level of mindfulness before you walk through the front door of the meditation retreat therefore you're going to get much more uh, we say bang for your buck in australia uh from the meditation retreat because you're starting in a much deeper baseline of meditation of uh, mindfulness uh, but uh, when you become uh, mature when you become acquainted with mindfulness mindfulness uh become independent of the posture time retreat household atmosphere everything become almost equal Be- for the beginners the atmosphere is very important time is very important meditation retreat is very important just like a nursery of the seedlings say they need all the darkness water every facility when the plant is growing uh, it can it has to be under the normal sun normal wind normal drought likewise your mindfulness must become harder and harder thank you pante <laughs> excuse me pante this uh... Uh, I need a little bit of clarification. I read your publication on Patika Samuppada at the website, and there I went to the chapter four, and uh, uh, there Bhante uh, says, when you are when you are experiencing anindriya pati badde vinyana, vinyana may get paralyzed, and vinyana vinyana may get paralyzed. Yeah, it loses power. um i haven't experienced that to i have experienced a little bit but i thought vinyana become more powerful my experience is that the total dead means total powerful so this is the contradictory in the life when you utterly silence you are most louder your vibration right. yeah i experienced that man the when i am actually waking up in the morning it is very 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 quiet and i think oh it's very it's very faint kind of and when i start working 
And when I'm mindful, I feel, okay, it's getting energy now. Is that right, Bhante? Yeah, that, that depends on your interpretation. So, when the vijnana is completely at the center, not manifested, that is 100% possibilities and 100% potential. Whenever vijnana manifested, it becomes partial, it becomes uh, paralyzed, majority, only one thing specialized. So, putujana, un- uneducated, uninstructed person, understand, paralyzed, sorry, manifested vijnana is a useful vijnana. So mm-hmm. they feel that Vijnana is at, at the center and with potential, it says it's a wastage of time life. But the Aryans, the enlightened being, they so say the most unpolluted, uncorrupted, Vijnana unmanifested is the most powerful. That's omniscient, omnipotent, mm-hmm. uh, 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 omnipresent. So they don't, they can't entertain it as mm-hmm. my Vijnana. There's no egocentric Central, no? it is a universal unconscious, universal consciousness become. So they can't claim this as me. They can't bind, find the boundary between my vijnana and not my vijnana. So that means the most pure form. So therefore they won't have the possession. Yeah. The jana is always asking a possession. It's a, the commanding and demanding nature. So only, only vijnana surrender to that situation once manifested, once filthy, once become defiled. Mm. So unpolluted vijnana, anidasana vijnana or pabhasara vijnana is uh, asokam virajang khema. It, it, is, it do not understand the regret. Virajang, no any refinements. Asokam virajang khema, it is like oasis. Give the soul is for anything. So we want to have my vijnana, my ability, my uh, possession. So then that means vijnana is already corrupted uh, or collapsed. One little bit, um, when I'm in this situation, I'm actually thinking, okay, I'm experiencing vijnana pachya nama rupa. Nama rupa there is that faint kind of uh, vibration. And then all of a sudden I hear a noise. Then I think, all right, that's Nama Rupa Pachya Vijnana, because it has gone to the Sota Vijnana. Sota Vijnana is again creating Nama Rupa. Is that understanding correct, Bhante? This is kind of an example that uh, Venerable Vipassi, the Buddha Vipassi says, <coughs> this cannot be explained enough in our language. When you understand, you are a different person. So whatever you try, it is an innocent try trial, but it never explained totally, which is a, it's a shifting of paradigm. It's not a linear, it's a leaps and bounds. So this is the way the books are, try to present it, and that is the way we learn in the book knowledge, sometimes rationalizing, but when practicing also, realization happens, you are no more the same person. You are not trying to explain it also, because you know whatever you do, it's a partial. Not complete one, but out of compassion you try. Uh, just like uh, live with the children, we learn the children language. Just to be with the children, to pacify children, but our language is not the children language. So likewise the Buddha come down to the normal language and share with us and say the pointing the finger to the moon is tip of the f- finger, you don't have the f- moon. You have to go projection over there, then only you can see the moon. Otherwise, you will ask the moon at the tip of the finger. Thank you very much, Bhante. Much merits. Bhante, could you uh, please kindly explain? Um, I'm still a little bit confused, like when you said Subha Nimitta. Um, Subha. Subha Nimitta. Like Subha Paramaham Bikkave. So... See the only the love spots. See the silver line in the dark cloud. Mm. Find a reason to be glad under any circumstances. That is called positive thinking. Does that also go in like meditation? Like like when you explain like I have this phobia, I don't want to see the bad side. It happens like for example during meditation if I see some bad emotional states like you know, oh it's so painful then I want to avoid it. Does that 
mean that I don't want to focus. I have to Instead acknowledge. Instead, you food? say, mind your own business, be mindful, be in the body. So it's, it's invariably you are pushing away bad thing, but your thing is positive thing. Applying mind to a neutral thing. It is net, you are not doing pushing off of the negative thing. You achieve this by applying your mind to the neutral, verifiable, simple object. Is that considered as positive, putting the, the suba or whatever? This is not really positive. In Vipassana, we take the neutral. Because almost everything in the sansara is negative. With that respect, under the, such circumstances, keeping the stream of consciousness in the neutrality is a challenge. It appears positive when compared to the negative. So that's why the breath is neutral. Rising and falling is neutral. Left leg, right leg is neutral. Brushing your teeth and be aware is neutral. So keep, fill your my, mind with that neutral uh, thought moments. It's your do away with all the negatives. Same way, you are do away with extreme positives also. So filling your stream of consciousness with the neutral, verifiable object, that is what you call the mindfulness. And that is kind of loving kindness also. Just with respect to that last comment, what do you think about? You remember you were in Toronto at the, at the seminar with Ajahn Brahm. No, and what, what do you think about? What do you think uh, with respect to that last comment about mindfulness and loving kindness? There's quite um, Ajahn Brahm in Toronto. You were there, uh, remember in the in the podium. He said, "This is uh, for those who don't understand what I'm talking about. This is the tenth uh, world conference on Buddhism in Toronto about three four months ago." Um, and he quoted the Buddha's saying that said that uh, certain um, defilements, mindfulness is not enough. You've got to have a metta, you've got to have loving kindness for very intense states of, I think it was anger or a few other things like so that. So it is oh. under the, the yakka known as uh, Manibhadra. And he comes and says, the Buddha, the I can do away all the kind of hatred. Then the Buddha says, no. Mindfulness is not enough to get rid of the totality of the hatred. So total defilements, total eradication, the, uh, and temporary suppressing, and understanding the anger, there are three stages. So in order to get rid of the totality, you may need, you may call other battalions also. But to understand, this is desire, this is anger. So now I am trying to understand and just suppressing anger and then total eradication. And they are in the uh, Sutanipada, uh, Ajita Manava come and ask Bhante here and there are a lot of cross currents. How can we tame the cross currents and how can they stop it? Then the Buddha says mindfulness is the way to tame it, uh, to cut off, wisdom must be there. So in a retreat, we try to just tame it, just like the four, six animals are being just tamed. And then later, whenever the chance happens, you can give a knockout, knockout shot in the last round of the boxing. So still that 14 rounds you have to play just to tame the other, other rivalry and meanwhile not to get the knockout. So where's the matter come in in that process you've just been talking about? Yeah, so that Manibhadra Sutta, talking about the total eradication of the anger. For the total eradication, panya. Sat, uh, panya yete piti yare. Satite san nivari. You have to just calm down first. Just like before the operation, you have to calm down the patient. You have to uh, um, anesthetize the patient. The anesthesia is not the operation. Anesthesia is a, is a conventional etiquette before the operation. So mindfulness is calming down six animals. And once calm down, you have a far sight. Then enough chances for the wisdom to arise. So wisdom is the chief guest welcome, invited guest. The mindfulness is the one make the stage. So therefore, uh, 
by the time you get the benefit of mindfulness, you are fairly better off, even though you are not completely eradicated. So you have to study the Manibhadra Sutta in Sangyutta Nikaya, and he, uh, number of occasions I, luckily Achan Brahm gave the preference, I studied little, and that is about the total eradication of hate. Okay, so metta is the thing that calms it down before to get it stabilised if you've got lots of hate and then with that stable mind, mindfulness arises and you can see the connections which give birth to wisdom and yeah. that's the knockout hit that knocks it out and it doesn't come back. Yeah, that uh, wisdom is an uh, invited guest. It never mm-hmm. comes when the situation is in a turmoil. Situation as far as it is not secured. The king will never come out to the street unless the security comes and says, time up. He never get out from the auspicious time. He is waiting for the security to come and says, okay, now it's okay. Then king comes right up in the royal way. Otherwise, the, there may be some conspiracies. Mm. So mindfulness make the pave and let, give the signal, the wisdom to come. It comes in the royal way and do the task. You, you keep on saying mindfulness, but you, um, and I'm and I'm keep on saying to you meta meditation, loving kindness. So when you're saying mindfulness, you're saying here, here in this case, but the anger is come up to a so tame to a certain extent. You see, it is there. Mm-hmm. Then you understand the practical utility value of metta. Oh, okay, that the appointment of the metta as the tool for here mm-hmm. is the function of mindfulness. Mm-hmm. And okay. at that time, specifically, I would say. Mitta will never lead to sex. Unless otherwise that situation happens, mit- sex can appear, a, a perverted way appear like Mitta. Mm. Then you are asking another problem. So when I was in Pandita Rama, not the Christopher Titimus, but another person from the UK came and asked Pandita Sayado, Panthi, don't teach Mitta. Because we people are just take it as like an addiction and doing, uh, ultimately they lose the things as they are. So Saito told, I am not teaching metta. So he's again and again asked, please. So at that time, I was doing metta bhavana. So he asked me to come. Saito told, please let him know. You have been here for 18 months. Now only I am teaching metta because your mind is now ready. So please explain him. Then uh, I told, I don't ever appreciate metta, but after a certain amount of vipassana, I ardently have to practice metta, karuna, mudita, upeka, then you know how to do it, and there is no chance for metta to pervert yourself, because metta is end up with a desire, or sexual or sensual desire, that is the perversion of metta. Karuna can end up with hate. So if you are doing it in a practical, utility way with the suggestion of mindfulness and the pro- seconding with wisdom, metta will use in the, in the only positive way. Otherwise, the metta, is, metta can be misinterpreted. I know one person, he started metta while teaching, so later he married one of the people in the class. Too much metta. <laughs> so he's so sorry he still says I am sorry Bhante now I have children I can't so I thought <laughs> would have done a little bit of <laughs> mindfulness to understand female and males <laughs> otherwise you will go on with that so that, that is the way I, I am still unmarried registered bachelor <laughs> So I'm very proud of that uh, venerable Dhammigas method. Don't go anything, just understand the perversions. To understand, so to take the, all the tools, you must have basic your um, sizing, uh, size up your who am I. See, all the all the te- all the techniques are free. Nothing to worry. Mindfulness is to only give the direct depth and the perspective, <coughs> and then you can use it at any time. And the Mahasi system is very, very ardent. They are, you have to utterly practice all the four no sublimes and all the jhana 
everything, but first you have to come to a certain amount of mindfulness and then only teacher decides uh, to give the advanced course or higher or galvanizing course. Thank you, Pante. Okay, Ramani can take over. After all that mindfulness, I who can talk a lot have nothing to say actually. <laughs> Except that, uh, well, it's coming back. Uh, on behalf of all of us, he said in English, Bhante, we are just that. It's beyond words to say thank you, just so inadequate. We've all, each retreat we move forward, but this has been a very different retreat. I don't know, somehow it feels different, but very wonderful. A lot of people with a lot of uh, different experiences, different practice, coming together in a very, very powerful way. Just uh, beyond words. So thank you, Bhante. Uh, I hope hope this is a long shot. The years that come, you come to New Zealand and give Australia a miss, uh, I know you go to Brisbane, maybe if you can give an English retreat here five days if possible would be a wonderful thing because there are more and more people who listen to your we have ex- your exposition of the Dhamma and uh, you know two years is a long time to wait. <laughs> So if you promise Satipasala, I will come walking. <laughs> no, not for all crock. So organize two days for children. I will do that. Yes. Yes. Then, I then would love to. I, will. I would love to if, if you... Uh, so all the old crock will be pushed into the behind <laughs> and I will keep the young children. Now that... Uh, and have one or two days. You are just uh, neutral observers. I've been thinking of that a lot, you know, having... You are uh, still thinking that yes, I still have given enough time. Yes. So but as far as you get pregnant and they have children, I will never come back. Whoops, a bit late for that. Yeah, so, so you, you, are, you are still afraid of becoming pregnant. Sorry. We can you do that. We have a lot and of... You have to take care of the children. If the children's program, if the Satyapasal is going to happen, so this time to Sydney, they are so enthusiastic, they told that we are the first time we got the Western University, 70 people, and you saw such a boost, Bhante, please, please, next year also. So I told till the end of the retreat, I won't make a decision, but if you are giving a due priority for the children, and if you can assure, not only single children, some local children also. You can do definitely. that. I will, definitely. I will come even without this schedule. I will come. Because I, I, am, I see, that I will start this way. So daily I know you all are facing me. And you, are, you would have observed, but I am telling in birth, you see how much Dhamma Jiva is improving. So it's amazing. If my mother to be here, she'll be just by enlightened by Sadda. <laughs> so the such a culprit now is coming and giving talks in such a way. The language is so good, the examples are so good and everything. So thank you very much. You. But as far as you are not organizing, if you are not passing the baton to children, you are selfish. We are, we have two ex dumb school children here, and uh, they can certainly take leadership. So, and use do it. this center, ask yeah. Mr. Achan Brahm, one day for children. We can do that, we can Even do that. Even without residential, if it's residential, it, it's a long procedure, I know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Achan Brahm can tackle it. And how, think about two, three children, 20, 30 children, if he can sit with, sleep with us and have residential retreat. Fantastic. I've been thinking about it a lot, but it hasn't gone beyond that. But if no, you no, are Raman willing to come... No, is too old. Sorry. Definitely, Bante. <laughs> too old. 100%, he's I agree. He's so much obsessed with that problem and this problem, and so he's not a mother, she is a grandmother. <laughs> yeah. Too late. No, so we can get can the young give people. the leadership, but please, others, uh, make sure 
uh, we are going to pass the baton to the next generation. So we have to be, and they, I will give you, I will tell you, it will be a, such a catalytic effect if the children are here. At the beginning, it's a ton of nuisance, I know. <laughs> but the second, third, or oh, few seconds, few seasons time, you won't believe you are very selfish. You people Bante, are very selfish. I know, the, I know the children because we have a lot of children in I told you the last... I don't have children, but I know. <laughs> We, we had 96 observing Sail Bante at the temple. It was amazing. The little ones were so good, you know. We said, now, be mindful. Now, I told them a bit about SMS. And said, oh, you can't run like that. They are very pious, full of sadda, and with their little patkade and all that, walking very carefully. But we do have young people. We have people here who started the Satipasala talking about it two years ago. Uh, this is, I this is to like place. I had my first meeting in the room with the university student about uh, 10 15, yeah. and that's the place I planted the seed. And not a single one is following me now. So yeah. I am not Purnima listening. Purnima is here. Huh? Purnima is here. Yeah. Uh, Pasan is here. And Harini. So three of them are there. So people like Pasan and Purnima, I spoke to Purnima, she said, I'm shy, I'm not a person who... I said, don't worry about it. No, so I, I'm can... not going to marry any girl. Nothing to worry, nothing to shy. <laughs> She's no, already married, unfortunately, Bhante. So you can talk directly with me. No problem. Because yeah. I thought of, I committed a registered bachelor. No, no idea. But there are young people who, who will come forward. No, no, that is, they, are, they, are, they are sluggish. They are, they are yeah. how they are to call it, lethargic. Uh, they have mm -hmm. not aroused. So that they present as a shy and all the kind of, they are, they are nonsense. We are with a very grand idea going to go for the children. We and will. Uh, I know that generation is the one to pass the baton. So we have to initiate here. And this time Melbourne have three day yeah. uh, residential retreat for the children. And Brisbane is organizing for one day in the next year. So they got my signature to get the blue card. So I can so can join. Why can't we in uh, Perth? We Every, can, and I they are all in English medium. Yeah, yeah. We have a lot of uh, younger people. You know, those who have no, left. no. You are going to paint me a picture, but it is not realistic. I am it will, waiting. It will. I am waiting. Determination is there. We'll do it. No, not the determination itself. Not by just mere wish must have inputs to strive shall through. Get them and we shall start uh, if, the, if the Barbara used to be here, I would have organized it. <laughs> she, was a, she, is a, she is a kind of a woman <laughs> with the backbone. She's watching. I, I went and pay respect to her tree. <laughs> Down there is a nice robust <laughs> bush, yeah. Barbara Rose. Yeah. So that's the kind of people we need to, to advance through. So I have no any hesitation to say if the time Satipasali is being organized, if I can have a um, one-day program or so. All people can play any hell, never mind. But give one day at least for children. You can do a weekend sort of thing, you know, two nights, Friday comes, so that Saturday and Sunday they yeah. go up. You can easily do that. She, yeah, some idea. Thank you. Um, could we do a, a little steering committee, like or just a few volunteers that could meet um, and try to work it out to link in with some schools and see what connections we have and make that happen? I'd be really happy to work with others if anyone wanted to come together and have coffee and talk about that and, and do some action. I don't know if that's of interest. But I do a lot of work with collaborative partnerships and so I can probably link in quite well with schools or with non-profits and government and corporates to kind of do that type of stuff if that's of interest. Happy yeah, can to. you replace Ramani? Yes. <laughs> can I what? Can you replace Ramani? Oh no. 
No, I, Ramani is awesome. <laughs> so Ramani will be Marani, and you, you take, and then we take Ramani also as a kid in the Sati parcel. I would really increase the food, though. <laughs> So whatever may be, give a, a rotten post <laughs> and push Ramani out and let the other people run the show. Marani yeah, Marani. It's a pun. Ramani. Marana means death. <laughs> <laughs> so Pardon me? No, that we have to we have to organize at the from the ground level, and at the beginning you must understand it's a lot of friction, it's a lot of uh, things are there, but we have developed enough mindfulness to carry forward, and then the day you pass the baton to children, they go to the go to go Melbourne. The big hall is more than it's a little bigger than this. All the children come and sit. One child take the mic and give the dot points how to do walking meditation and lead. And parents are looking, teachers are looking, and then come and then SMS, they come sit and give guided meditation by another child and they sit. And they all the feedbacks and happening in, in a in a very uh, praiseworthy method. Everything done by children. They know, and they are, they are good masters, and they are, they are potential, their capacity. And the parents become, they have they are become envious about the Satipasal of our facilitators because they become so close, the rapport, the relationship. So I invite if someone can go to Melbourne for this Sati camp and Sati uh, non residential, we have three days. Uh, two hours each day. We did the same Monday? thing in the ba- Canberra, in Melbourne, Kisper, Kis- 29th and 30th of January. Yes. Canberra, we did five days, and Sydney, we did one day. Um, uh, Brisbane, so one uh, half a day for Satipasala. So that is, uh, we, we aim at the children, but all the other elders are right around, they are also doing. But the uh, main thing is, main focus is on children. Uh, if she can come to the conference. Yeah, yeah then, then it will be a real ambassador. If you have time, please welcome to Sri Lanka. I will show you the how the Sri Lankan children they are doing. It's a completely different atmosphere. We don't have amenities. We don't have places. The children are very poor people, poor children. But the way they are doing, and you will be you will be understanding the the difference in the social and economic level. But the ch- children mind exactly the same, whatever the language. So please, please replace so many. <laughs> so that then that will be the huge leap. Yeah, I second that. <laughs> Pardon me, a retreat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That for the first time Melbourne three days. Next year in uh, Brisbane, 
uh, kind of a residential treaty, but it's a, it's a uh, Australian government is very keen about it, and uh, so they have to get the permission, and you must have the license. So if you are a Sri, if you are a resident here or um, Australian, the government will understand, and uh, they know how to deal it with. Now we have fairly advanced few steps. We may have to go into rather than a place like this sometimes. I don't know. There are so many governmental restrictions. There's open water. You have to fence it and being in the bush area and all that. But if we can get, I don't know, I'm just thinking, places like scout camps, no. which uh, are for camping and for children and things like that. But I am sure finding 30 children would be absolutely a breeze. There will be lots of especially if you go for the older teens and things like that, there'll be quite a few children. I'm quite sure they'll come. So you have a hope. Once oh, yes, you die, very much. Next life. Yeah. I'll be there watching there'll over. There'll be a lot of Satipasal activities. <laughs> Nothing to worry. Please die. <laughs> I'll try. Please go <laughs> and say bye-bye, come back <laughs> to the Satipasal. Welcome to Satipasal. But I am not going to die. <laughs> I'll be everlasting and I'll be waiting. I'm waiting to Barbara to come. <laughs> yeah, maybe. So we have to invite so that Barbara will come and dance here. Still two years old. <laughs> yes. Yeah, her laugh. She used to, she used to be a. Yes. Uh, second later than everybody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That she has a sound, hearing sounds and then start laughing. <laughs> she it, had a, a, a acute hearing problem. She yeah. was not uh, really... But uh, she later started, uh, she mm. forget about difficulties and uh, one monk came and told, you are lying, you are. You can hear. Remove this old guy. They don't know she can really hear. The miracle happened. Mm. So Barbara is the type uh, we need in Perth, not Ramani. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Ramani you. Ramani only is backward. <laughs> you, have, you have started this uh, association to organize retreats in uh, Perth, so you can use that to start the Satipasala organization here as well. So if you can get some contact uh, of the people in the other cities like Melbourne, New Zealand and so on, so all the others have very well harmonized. Uh, um, uh, Chandrika done a marvelous job. So if you have, if some, if, if you can give the database some some of your support and start something, they will come and teach you, and Amaranath will be happy to come and conduct it. And then a few days time, you will go there and kind of a uh, ambassadors ch changing. And it's a really cultural event. So I'm waiting to see some Australian faces. The children, because our children can learn. Specifically, if I can bring some of these uh, few uh, scouts and girl guys to Sri Lanka and live with our uh, the local people. No, but we have one yoga master uh, from Italy. So it's a Sudhu Mama. And he's uh, making children shouting and doing yoga, so they are so engaged. Because they, they find kind of a relationship, and there's one Chinese co, he became a monk, and he also go there and do, uh, with the help of the translator, mindful games. So it's something new for children. So it's a kind of a bridging, kind of a communication bridge. Definitely, that for the children, son, uh, the, we have to do it in English. Bhante, is there anyone at your monastery in Tandi uh, in, the, in the next 10 days that's part of this organization, the Sadi Pasar organization? You, you mean back in Nisarnavani, the Tao Monastery? Yes. Yes. So you, uh, you've been there, isn't it? Yeah, she has been to there and she's been to Brisbane 
and uh, so she may give of course the if you go to the website you have the timetable two retreats are there for the in english medium but now it is become a custom few foreigners are coming and sitting if they ask question i answer in uh, english otherwise they just they are happy to sit with meditators uh, even though it is not english medium No, I, then I didn't get your point, please. Uh, I was interested in actually making... I was interested in actually making contact with some of the people with your school project. Uh, that uh, uh, Satipasala Foundation is the uh, formal this thing. And uh, so if you... Is that in Candy? Is, no, uh, it's uh, based in Sanjan's house in uh, Colombo. Ah, okay, Colombo. No, he 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 is okay. the house owner. He is only taking the rent out of our house. That is, <laughs> that is not the issue. But uh, I am telling, <laughs> I am telling. This is the place we uh, we put it because we wanted to go secular. No any monasteries, no any kind of thing. Uh, he offered, and we have a very very nice uh, communication system. So if you can make an inquiry or if you can write to my email address, uh, you will see how efficient we are in. Even though I am here, that each and every day I am monitoring if I ask back in home, at home, the Satipasala, everything is very transparent, very demo- democratic, very quite division of labor. Uh, enormous amount of resources, people come and do. We only concern about the standardization. Just, just to keep the sati as the main thing, and all the other things can come, and all the skills from the departments and uh, kind of thing, they come and do because they are that is their dream. Because children are completely vulnerable today in Sri Lanka. I mean that we we from traditional country, the president is so worried. He says, do something. Whatever the small scale, because for the children we can't do mass scale. We have to have a one-to-one contact. It's it's a loving thing. So females are expert because we satya, kavya, children. That means the, they are they are talking in terms of poems. They are talking in terms of drawings, dancing, and children and laughing and mothers. So it is a new born again Buddhism. And, you know, you've got a lot of healing to do in the north of your country, or actually in the whole lot of your country. And I was thinking about it the last day or so. Your, this, this project of mindfulness is absolutely uh, the right antidote for the trauma in children's minds that are left by the scars of the Civil War. You know? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's absolutely what the doctor... Are you so happy when it is going to the northern side? Yeah, yeah the north. The, the war strike an area mm. and they are they are asking us to go and have camps in their place uh, they are ready to organize it and when we are having a conference like this 50 percent is tamil language so we feel so harmony i can speak little bit of tamil and they are so productive they are so pragmatic they are talking only practical side please they say come Come to our place and uh, that uh, secular way we go. But they say, don't send monks. <laughs> <laughs> they have so phobia because uh, monks are kind of... A... Monks are a symbol of the power structure that, that yeah. crucified them. <laughs> yeah, so therefore that I am, my, my robe also not shown, my face also not. So we put the Satipasala facilitators and trainers... We appoint ambassadors and exchange. For the moment, we do only through the education ministry. Now, uh, the health ministry also taking to going to take it up, and uh, definitely it will be a success story. Thank you, Bande. It depends. When we are doing the uh, games, we arouse them. But when you are sitting, SMS. Walking, SMS. So they, you, have to, you have to guide them properly. Then they understand more than you. 
more than you all people, they only talk while sitting. <laughs> Another time not. Okay, now, any, any end to this? Uh, the uh, yeah. Yes, um, I would like to say thank you. It was my first Buddhist retreat. I've done other retreats in the past, silent retreats, but that was the first one. And it was wonderful to be here in this place and, um, you know, to see people sharing, you know, my interest in meditation and in mindfulness. So I would like to say thank you. And um, I like your idea of the children's retreat. I have four grandchildren. I would love to bring them. Well, maybe not the youngest. He's still two. But I told them that I was coming to do my retreat to be oming all week because I do om. You know, I chant om before I start. And they make fun of me. They sit cross legs and they, you know, they keep saying om, om. And then I said, well, I'll be oming all week. Uh, so it would be lovely to uh, bring them. And uh, if you organize this retreat... I hope they they will come along. So and, we, we, uh, we gong the bell and we go for singing bowl, just like oh, creating a sound and see seeing the see see the end of the sound. The masters, yeah, the yeah. masters. Yeah, and uh, with my personal life, I you know I I share this um, mindfulness with people. I encourage them to slow down and be mindful. So <clears throat> it was wonderful to be here. Thank you very much. Welcome. Your children more welcome than you. <laughs> yeah, great, great. You mentioned many books during your talk. Have you got a list anywhere? Of but you may go mad reading? if you read my list. I am reading all nonsense on the earth. Ah. <laughs> Can't you so leave people the nonsense will ask me to not to just... share because it is none, none of the monk's business. <laughs> I read everything. So if you wish, I can take, but don't go mad. <laughs> Maybe just give us the gist, leave out the nonsense. Yeah. Just things like. Power, I can I can send you the send you the. Uh, it's the... just that we need the author to find them on the web. Yeah. And I, I download them and read in the Kindle uh, books yeah. and kind of thing because there's nothing to throw away. Everything, it has some, some value. So you have to, not only the, mm-hmm. limit it to the Buddhist scripts, but yes. uh, the, all the other people, because people are generally good. Generally good when you are reading, so I can pass it. I will give it to Ramani or I don't yes. have your email address. But uh, if you over it and get Diseases, I am no disclaimer, disavow. Thank you. Bhante, I ask permission from you to speak, please. Speak? Yeah. <laughs> I there to, to sing some poems, or songs. No? to speak one day. Okay, welcome. I want all the audience people please remember from the 1st of January up to today the all the wholesome merits that you have gathered. Take a moment and radiate all that merits for Bhante, most venerable Dhamma Jiva Tero, to success his Satipasala, to improve the Satipasala, and to spread the Satipasala worldwide. Please accept this chanting, Bhante. Yogis can join me. It's in Ratana Sutta before the last chapter. Ki 
Dinam Puranam Navanati Sambavam Virata Chitta Ayati Kebavasming Teki Nabija Avirulli Chandra Nibanti Dira Yatayam Padipo Idam Pisange Ratanang Panitang Etena Sachena Suati Hotu May this will be your last birth. May you attain Nibbana this lifetime. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Sadhu, same to you. Sadhu, sadhu. Anumodami, anumodami. Um. Um, I don't know, I have no words to thank you uh, for your invaluable teaching and also for reforming me. <laughs> I remember the first couple of retreats I had with you. You have scolded me so much for talking. You and in future expect some more. <laughs> <laughs> but now I won't need you to scold me because I've got so quiet. <laughs> and that's thanks to you. And I find the benefit of that, because this retreat especially, I, I almost didn't come because I was quite sick. Um, had shingles, and the pain of shingles I still have. And especially with mindfulness, the pain is worse. It's like when the two you know, negative and positive nerve roots are touching, it's like sparking you know, all this pain. And I yet came, thanks to Ramani, if not for her, maybe I wouldn't have come and also with other disabilities that I have. It's amazing, you know, what you have actually done for me. And um, thank you very much. And, um, yeah, it, I, I really don't have words because you have been very good in my life for me. And also, Ramani, I have no words to thank you too, especially for encouraging me to come over. And uh, I was struggling to walk in Adelaide for the last one year. <laughs> and here, amazingly, I'm sitting on a mat meditating. So thanks very much, Ramani. I hope you can keep up your good work with all the encouragement to give everybody. And I don't know if anybody could replace Ramani. Because she's, she's wonderful. Because it's not easy to manage a crowd like us. You know? <laughs> Especially somebody like me. And so it would be very hard to replace Ramani, but I know you'll do a good job too. Anyway, thank you everyone. And also the team, Ramani's team, uh, Amit, and in everybody who worked, you know, the Dritrians who did all this voluntary work, helping in the kitchen, the laundry, the cleaning up. If not for all that support, I don't think I could have handled this retreat. So many blessings to all of you and Hopefully, whatever your determinations are in life, that will be fulfilled. Thank you very much. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. <clears throat> Dear Venerable Bhante, um, this is actually uh, my first retreat, first ever. I've been meditating uh, about a year and a half now. So I'm really, really grateful that I was able to come to see you and with your guidance. There were a lot of, I had a lot of questions, unanswered questions that's all been answered. Uh, thanks for um, the yogis as well. So putting up the questions and um, thank you very much for giving great clarifications of those um, questions that I had. And uh, I think I was able to uh, 
um, how do I say is this since um, childhood I had this um, there's something missing I felt always there's something missing in my life but last uh, 18 months or so I was slowly being able to uh, put pieces together and understand what I want so this retreat really helped me to um, understand and uh, come out to the mindfulness to um, achieve it in the future so um, thank you very much Bhante and thank you to Ramani and the team for organizing uh, such a great um, retreat for us thank you Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Bhante, I would like to thank you very much for all the teachings. This is the fourth retreat for me with you. The first one, I was a novice, didn't know what meditation was, at, and that was at Mitrigala. You taught it so well. But uh, didn't, I didn't really know much at all. The next two retreats in Dunedin, though you conducted them in Singhala and I couldn't uh, follow it fully, I was able to get enough to get an interest and continue practicing. And this retreat in English has been marvelous. And contrary to what you tell us old people, <laughs> I came to it so late, but I'm so glad I did. So don't get discouraged. <laughs> but but this is the only joke. Uh, but it's lovely for the young people to get into it early so they can enjoy longer peace and a better life. And thank you very much, Pante. And may you attain Nibbana in this life. You paid a visit to Satipasala in Sri Lanka. No, Satipasala, Bhante, I met you in Dunedin and you were talking about uh, wanting to start a school in Jaffna and I said to contact Kushal, I don't know whether he helped you or not, but uh, I was just thinking now, uh, I know of a doctor from Australia who's doing a lot of work in Mena with the uh, orphaned children. She goes there and uh, lives there with them and teaches them English and I was thinking I must contact her and ask her to get in contact with the uh, the organization in Colombo so she can help uh, spread it to that part of the country as well. So in the MENA, the it's district uh, education director definitely is involved, uh, underwent uh, three-day retreats right. and some uh, zonal directors and others. So departmental authorities they are now. Right, so, I, I'll put her in contact with them. Yeah. So, and then yeah. that was the ethical part we wanted to clear clarify now it's that clarification is there so if you want sc some schools can volunteer and come and uh, we have now fair amount of uh, army or ammunition uh, to go to Tamil areas because uh, whenever we go to the Muslim schools you're so happy the way they practice and they express them and uh, the Muslim uh, Tamil schools easier because uh, philosophically they are fairly parallel and they are very welcoming it. So someone has to take the initiative. Yeah, I, uh, that's really good to know. Thank you very much, Bhante. Uh, usually we go for uh, standard f four, that means the age 10, 10 to 20. But now we go spread it in the universities and then Montessori's and all the others. But the a basic is 10 to 20. Um, Venerable Bunty, I um, just wanted to say from yeah, the bottom of my heart just how grateful I am for this retreat, um, for everyone, for everyone's energy and um, <clears throat> I feel very fortunate to be here and uh, as you know I was in Brisbane before, uh, before Christmas for the seven day retreat so I feel like I had a double blessing this year and um, it's been so special to have to have been in silence since back in December, sometime fifteenth, I think, as till now. Um, and what a beautiful gift it was. So thank you for coming to Australia. And I'd really, really like to reinforce <laughs> Ramani's invitation to please come to Perth uh, more often if you can, um, because yeah, we just love having you here. Really do. And um, also, uh, 
Oh, from the bottom of my heart, just thank you, Ramani, and your sister, <laughs> both of you, because I've been coming to your retreats for like six years now, and every year you are both so selfless. You know, I'm sitting here meditating, having a great time, and you're up working and getting our breakfast ready and, you know, organizing us, and, and you sacrifice so much to help us and to give to us, and just, yeah, you, you know, how can we ever repay you for what you do for us? Thank you so, so much. Yeah. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard. You have any context to Barbara? <laughs> I, I, I sent her some merits this retreat because I still think of her. So that's I still only think of her I also love. Have, so. Yeah, she was such a golden, beautiful woman. I felt, yeah. She drove all the way to down south to Albany, which is about how many hundred miles? Denmark. Uh, Denmark, not Albany, Denmark. Denmark. Anyway, she had been developing a brain tumor here. She went there and she kind of uh, didn't know how she got there. There were probably the mindfulness or something kept her going there. Anyway, she died uh, about uh, seven, eight months later. But it was some amazing good fortune that she came here. She drove all the way back, and she was not feeling well. They took her to a, insisted she go to a doctor. They flew her to Perth, and uh, she was very, very sick. But I feel it's the mindfulness that she practiced here that enabled her to drive a couple of hundred miles. About 400 miles. And, uh, yeah, so two people who have been here are now no more. Waiting for the Satipasala. <laughs> that wait a bit. <laughs> a lot of us are going to join the queue, I guess. <laughs> ah, yes. That's another one who, uh, who's uh, Jeff. Yes. He used to come for the retreats. That's uh, another person, so... Once Ajahn Brahm said, statistically, uh, the certain percentage of you won't be here next, next time round. So <laughs> we don't know which one of us it is going to be. I'm acutely conscious of my advancing years. So it's nice to know that so there no, are others. No problem, because we have a hope. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, not next only seven year, years' time. Next life, next life you can you have That's a hope. seven years, Bhante. Too yeah. long to wait, but before so that, there are people... <laughs> Communication within that seven <laughs> years, that is the only problem. Yeah. So I think we should... Oh, no, there's about another 15 minutes if anyone wants to make any comments. Right, to me. Ever changing. Just to let you uh, all know that uh, we have been recording all the sessions, Dhamma Talks and Q&A, and uh, we will be uploading uh, those talks uh, and we'll be sharing with uh, dhamsara.org. So they are, the files will be edited and uh, we will send you the link so that you can download all the talks from there. In addition to that, uh, for the first time ever from John Grove, we have been live, live streaming all these uh, sessions as well. So even at the moment, there are uh, some uh, connecting to these sessions remotely. So that is for the first time, Venerable Nito, who, was, uh, who is the uh, coordinating monk for the IT affairs, he is so glad that we were able to do it for the first time. That's all because of uh, Bhante's encouragement. We were not so sure whether we would be able to do that, but uh, his advice was uh, so valuable and uh, encouraging. Um, so that's why it happened. So I'm so glad that we could manage to do it. Uh, 
most venerable Bhante. I'm one of the few interstate participants in this retreat. I'm from Adelaide. I uh, started my uh, meditation when I attended uh, the Adelaide retreat in 2000, January 2016. I'm so glad that I came here. Um, I'm looking forward to attend some of the sessions in the next retreat too. But I'm so um, thankful and grateful for the spiritual guidance throughout this uh, retreat. Um, now, one of my biggest um, take-home messages is that mindfulness is not a not only a daily practice, but a moment by moment by moment practice. And that, especially the fact that we try to develop our practice in a linear fashion and try to you know measure it in the linear way. So now I understand that it cannot be done that way. So that is one of the great, that is the big insight that I had. And of course, the, uh, the, one, of the, you know, one of the biggest mes uh, messages this time you keep saying, not to, main thing is not to worry. So I have to keep reminding that to myself. And uh, may I take this opportunity to ask for forgiveness for any wrongdoings um, done intentionally or unintentionally. Uh, using my mind, uh, verbal actions or uh, bodily actions. And uh, may all the merits will help you to attain the wisdom, to realize Nibbana in this life itself, if you haven't done it already. Sadhu, I, I never ask forgiveness because I wish to do more naughty things in future. <laughs> and... Um, I also wish to um, express my heartfelt gratitude to Ramani and uh, her team um, uh, for the wonderful, you know, infra, all the facilities and running up and down and making our life easier and uh, the retreat more enjoyable. And I'm uh, so glad they are going out of their way to even give a, a ride to the airport which, you know, you, they don't have to. So I'm so grateful. And may all the merits that you collected by giving uh, to all the participants um, will enable your uh, road to the wisdom and the ultimate Nibbana uh, quicker and um, with less difficulty. I don't know the right words, but, you know, Sukha Patipada, Veng Nirvane Aubodha Veva Kela, Ramani and... Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. We together pass a word of thanks to the Jana Group for these yes. facilities and yes. the place. Uh, otherwise, very difficult to have this kind of uh, consistency. So, please uh, pass my thanks and humble gratitude to Achan Brahm. For the moment, he is uh, in a silence retreat. So I had no chance to go and meet him. So please, I think some of the sisters can do it on behalf of me. And uh, one last thing for all the yogis, thank you so much for sharing your insights, wisdom and experience. May all this help you to um, make the, you know, to, ultim to realize the ultimate truth in this life in, and attain Nibbana in this life itself. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. I won't take more than two minutes. Um, I, I just come from uh, Brisbane, and it's kind of very nice environment, and uh, I cannot compare both the places, but this is really peaceful. There I was more involved with organizing and that sort of uh, looking after ladies' uh, side and all that. But here I didn't have anything to do, so I could practice my mindfulness. And um, thank you, everybody. But I want uh, especially to men mention the ladies who were helping with the food because I wasn't going there for three days. Then I realized when I went in to help, how much work they have done for us to have these kind of well-rounded meals. So I didn't feel hungry at all in the nighttime. 
So thank you so much for doing that. That is kind of motherly love. Thank you so much. And thank you very much for everybody. And also, I had been listening to uh, Bhante Damajeva since 2006 or 2008. Uh, the, the day I met him at the Brisbane, uh, Brisbane Temple uh, with Venerable Damavasa Avanayaka Hamadro, and um, from that day onwards, I had been listening and practicing. But I took a long time because I was very involved with other things. But now I know uh, from listening and practicing, this is the only way for me out of this sansara. But I'm glad I can come back to Satipasala. <laughs> Welcome to Satipasala. Thank you very much. That's why I had been asking about the last consciousness all the time. <laughs> I don't want to be in this body anymore. I want to come back to Satipasala. Thank you so much. And we all have good, uh, good health and happiness. And much merits to everybody involved. And Bhante, uh, we will always uh, pray for your happiness and longevity. Thank you very much once again. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Uh, Bhante, this is uh, especially some information about uh, Barbara to you because uh, you may not know uh, Barbara's uh, funeral was really beautiful and before she died she had written uh, because her, re her relatives came from America uh, because she, she has, as you know she had cancer for a long time but she didn't show it and she uh, looked after herself very well and uh, so they were not familiar with any of her Buddhist activities. Uh, so uh, she had written it out and um, she had written in that she hopes that a monk would be present at her funeral. So uh, there weren't that many traditional Buddhists but it, very interestingly Venerable Sujatu was there and uh, he made a contribution at the funeral. And also because she was so concerned about the environment uh, she did not want a wooden coffin so it was a, a beautiful basket uh, and uh, she had told people uh, and she didn't want flowers to, for people to bring just something from their garden, even a leaf. And it was really a beautiful funeral. Uh, and even her passing, her, f her relatives were there by her bedside. But for some reason, they went out for about two minutes. And when they came in, she was gone. And she was speaking till the last, uh, she was, and she was at home. So we'll assure a good funeral for you also. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I asked the undertaker, because they live in the, the she, her funeral was in the south, and I live in the northern suburb, so I asked whether they have a branch to provide a basket. And she said, Madam, any time we are there, any place. <laughs> So, so we will take care, Ravani, please make note. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for that support. Thank you for the thanks, but I would like to mention that everybody seems to be thanking me, but we are the Sri Lanka Meditation Retreats WA. It happened a few years ago uh, when actually Anand and Amita said, look, you're doing this quite a bit. Uh, we are ever ready to help you? Just let us help you, which was uh, uh, amazing because I, I, my thing is I don't like to bother people, but... It, I, there's some, some wonderful energy that people come together. So uh, it's not just me, it's so many people coming together. I have some, like some people get blamed for everything. I get credit for things I didn't do. <laughs> <laughs> Even when I was a child, it used to annoy my sisters and brother that uh, sometimes, say, when there were, there was people, I'm the oldest in the family, and there were people coming to a meal and they'd be helping and doing all sorts of things but I used to taste the food and say if it was okay but 
I was always a bit of a chatterbox. And anyway, when people left after the meal, they always thanked me. And they used to be furious and say, you didn't do a darn thing and you get thanked for it, you know. So I've got that marvelous uh, good karma. So I get thanked, but I tell you, there are a lot of people putting in a lot of hard work. Like for the last retreat, Amita did it, and this time Percy did it, you know, collating all these names, writing to people, emails. Heck of a lot of work. And then in the kitchen, uh, this time we decided that without my kind of uh, being there, we should appoint someone, and we appointed Visaka. And she's been... Uh, but as I said, the kitchen took on a life of its own. I, again, dis- disclaimer here, I said simple, no, not to too much work, just porridge, bread, and look what happened. <laughs> So my apologies to all the people who had to put in all that hard work. I would like to think that those with, uh, it's your karma, if those who have done a lot of uh, food kind of karma enjoy the food, those who maybe were slave drivers in life's past had to do all the slaving. I ask your forgiveness for that. But it was wonderful. People just, after that first day when I said, can everybody... And there was not much talking, Bhante, that is amazing. Usually there's so much noise in the kitchen, but uh, people just did things gently, quietly. Of course, you have to talk a little, you can't help it. it everybody pulled together, and I think we've come together like this before many lifetimes, and maybe come together again and again. So it's not just me, it's that every one of you who needs to be thanked. Mercy, thank you for your silence, and... Uh, yeah, it's been a beautiful retreat. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So, Bhante, maybe formally uh, the papers there, where, because usually uh, most of you who uh, don't listen to the singular questions go off. We, it's a traditional practice asking uh, forgiveness for what, sharing merit and uh, asking forgiveness for what we may have mostly unintentionally done. A uh, lot of things happen unintentionally. I ask forgiveness for all the toes I would have trod on as I ask people, Shh, a little quiet, please, sort of business. So uh, this is asking Bhante. We share merit with Bhante. We've been sharing merit with all beings every day. We share merit especially with Bhante, and there's a traditional formula which... Uh, the meanings are there. I hope you've had a glimpse at it. It's extremely beautiful. It's extremely beautiful. It's, uh, yeah, we'll do it. Suki Hantu. Maya Patan Kunyan Savina Anumodita Sadhu Sadhu Anumodami. Savina Patan Kunyan. Sadhu Anumodi Tabbang. Sadhu Sadhu Anumodami. Opa Sadhwara Kehe Atan Sabbang Hachayan Kamatane Bhante. Kamami Kamitabbang. Opa Sadhu Kamami Bhante. Suki Hum Tu. Sutiyati Opa Sadhu Kamami Bhante. Suki Hum Tu. Sutiyati Opa Sadhu Kamami Bhante. Abhivadana Silis Nichang Vadda Pachaino Chattaro Dhamma Vadanti Ayuano Sukang Balang Ayuraro Gyasampati Tagasampati Mevacha Ato Nibana Sampati Minati Amijatu Suki Huntu, may you all be healthy, wealthy, and happy. Now we 
as the last formal thing that the uh, relinquishment of uh, precepts those who have you know, on eight precepts may come down to ajivattamakasile uh, so those who wish to relinquish precepts may start with namo tassa please namo tassa Please follow after me. Buddhaṃ saranaṃ gacchāmi Dhammaṃ saranaṃ gacchāmi Saṅghaṃ saranaṃ gacchāmi Dutiyampi buddhaṃ saranaṃ gacchāmi Dutiyampi dhammaṃ saranaṃ gacchāmi Dutiyampi saṅghaṃ saranaṃ gacchāmi Tatiyampi buddhaṃ saranaṃ gacchāmi Tatiyampi dhammaṃ saranaṃ gacchāmi Tatiyampi saṅghaṃ saranaṃ gacchāmi Saranagamanaṃ sampunnaṃ Pānāti pātā viramani sikkhāpadaṃ samādhyāmi Adinnā dhānā viramani sikkhāpadaṃ samādhyāmi Kāme su mitcha chāra vermani sikkhā padaṃ samādhyāmi Musā vādā vermani sikkhā padaṃ samādhyāmi Pisunā vācha vermani sikkhā padaṃ samādhyāmi Parusa vacha viramani sikkha padaṃ samādhyāmi Sampaphalāpā viramani sikkha padaṃ samādhyāmi Micchā jīvā viramani sikkha padaṃ samādhyāmi Tisarane na saddhinga jiva ngattama ka silang dhammang sadhukang surakkitang kattva appamade na sampade tabbang Sukhi hontu supatitta mi yol be healthy, wealthy and happy. Bhante, I have forgotten something that is because they are sitting behind me I have not acknowledged the wonderful presence. I acknowledge. I morning I told that I am really appreciating for robes <laughs> uh, coming here, and I promise next time to pay a visit to Gijigana. Ah, oh, thank you, Bhante. They are like daughters, and you tend to take uh, family members for granted. I am very sorry. But they have to behave well. <laughs> I, I told them. I told them behave well, and then uh, we will d- use them as uh, ambassadors. They already are. They are an inspiration to us. And if those who don't know the nuns, they are from the nuns' monastery in Gijiganap. So uh, you should visit them sometime. There are 12, uh, I think, in the community now. Yes. Earlier it was only few. And uh, it's growing. I'd like to say very proudly she's not here, but my daughter is also among the bhikkhunis there. So of course, so much gladness. So... Forgive me for treating you like family. <laughs> okay, we can uh, remember to take the mats after Panthi leaves. <laughs>